Now let's talk quantum numbers. Uh, quantum numbers, again, are just going to describe where is a given electron in the electron cloud. Now, I could write a set of quantum numbers for any one of the electrons in this electron cloud. Um, to do that, again, successfully, I need a set of four quantum numbers. Uh, the first one corresponds to the main energy level that electron is in. The second one, what shape orbital. The third one, what orientation. Which particular orbital are we talking about? And the fourth one is the spin. So if we think about assigning a or writing a letter to any one of these electrons, I'm going to pick a random electron. We'll choose this one to send a letter to. Again, there are four things that we need to write in the address to make sure that this gets to the electron that we want it to. The first thing we need to write is the main energy level that, that electron is in. It is in the second main energy level, so that's going to go first. Again, that's sort of like saying, um, am I going to Little Winging, or am I going to London, or Berkshire, or Edinburgh, or whatever else little town we're talking about. Uh, so first, just you know, where am I going, what general region? Second main energy level. Next, I need to know the shape. Now, the shape is a P-shaped orbital, which corresponds to those dumbbell shapes. But we have to assign a number to it. And the L values are either going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. And those correspond to the S, P, D, or F shape orbitals. Because we're in a P orbital, our um, angular momentum quantum number, our L value, is going to be 1. Now as you look, there are three different p orbitals in the second main energy level. So the third quantum number is going to specify which one are we talking about. And again, we're going to assign a number to them. Now when you're trying to figure out which one, which orientation number to assign, I want you to think number line. Okay, the middle orbital is always going to have what's called the zero orientation. And then think of your number line. To the right of zero, we'll have our positive numbers. And so we'll have our positive orientation uh, values. To the left of that, we'll have our negative orientation values. So again, think number line. So as we think about our three p orbitals here, the central one will have that zero orientation. To the left of it, we'll have negative numbers, the negative one. To the right of it, we'll have positive numbers, positive one. And so as I think about where this electron is located, which particular 2p orbital, we're talking about the negative one orientation. And that's sort of like which particular room in the house. We know we're talking about the 2p household, but the 2p household has three rooms in it. And so, again, if I'm trying to get to this electron and specify the particular room, in this case, it's the negative one room. I mean, that seems kind of odd, but so is the cupboard under the stairs. Like, that's just what we call this room. It's the negative one room. And then lastly, we need to figure out, is it this electron or is it this electron? Which of the two that can fit in there are we talking about? It's the first one in there, so we'll indicate that with the positive one half spin value. And again, this last number can only be positive one half or negative one half, depending on which of the two electrons that we're talking about. So this address will successfully get this letter to this electron. Keep in mind, if I wanted to write a new letter to a different electron, I would need a new set of quantum numbers, a new address, much like you do not have the exact same address as the other people in your house. You may have very similar addresses, but something in the address has to be different so the mailman knows to go to you versus your brother or your sister or grandma or uncle or whoever. So let's pick another one. I'm going to choose this one here. Okay, This electron is in the third main energy level. It's in an S-shape orbital. The S-shape orbital corresponds to an L value or an angular momentum value of zero. As you think about the orientation or which 3S orbital, let's take a look. 
there's only one 3s orbital. And so for s orbitals, you will only ever have a zero orientation because there's only one. Unlike the p orbitals where there's three and we have to distinguish between which one we're talking about, if we're talking s, there's only one of them per main energy level. So our orientation value is also gonna be zero. Note though, it's the second arrow in that orbital, so it's gonna be the negative one half spin. And think about these two addresses. It's sort of like saying this thing, this one's going to little winging, but this one's going to a completely different town. This one's going to Edinburgh. Okay, so we're talking a different town, different energy levels here. This one's going to the second, this one's going to the third. So completely different towns. Uh, this is in an S orbital. This one's in a P orbital. Uh, we have to specify which room of the house for that third one, and the last one is what specific person, which, which specific, we're talking Harry Potter versus Queen Elizabeth, you know, specifically who in that room are we talking about? <sighs> okay, let's take a quick look at just one more here. Uh, this time we'll pick this electron, uh, which is in the second main energy level. So it's like saying it's in the same town as this one. We're both in little winging. Um, it's in a p orbital. So oh, we're in the same house, but we're not in the same room. This one's in the cupboard under the stairs, and this one's in, I don't know, in the kitchen. So its orientation value is going to be plus one. Its spin value is going to be negative one half, because it's in the second one in there, it's in the down direction.